Hi, everyone, and good afternoon. Uh, in case this is your first time watching me, I'm Katrina, and my twin flame isn't here with me right now, but um, her name is Anne. If you guys haven't met us before, hi, nice to meet you. Um, today, I want to talk to you guys about shadow work. Um, you know, we're people are constantly coming to us asking, how do I get into union with my twin flame? And, you know, Anne and I, I mean, we want to say, like, there's not this really rigid path that we can lay out for you that's okay well here's what we did and here's what you need to do just do what we did walk in our path you know I think at one one time we might have um, we might have said that or felt that way but we certainly don't now um, that we've had a lot more experience coaching twin flames and getting to know a lot of different people's journeys what we can see is that everybody is having their own unique experience of what is essentially a archetypal energy in the human consciousness that I mean I really just like at this point I like to refer to the twin flame experience as an archetypal experience born out of the human consciousness and the desire for a conscious love for a really congruent um, harmonious consciously loving relationship and you know I mean I think that this is a, a sign of um, of actualization al along the development the evolution of the human consciousness because you know um, a thousand years ago when we didn't have a lot of comfort technology like we do now um, people spent all their time just trying to survive and get comfortable and here now we have um, some we have an opportunity to actually care about something on a higher plane, a higher spiritual plane. And so, um, and so I think it's really just amazing how the human consciousness has developed to now like this new desire is born. We want, we want love, we want true love, we want conscious love. And, um, and how do I get it? Well, I'll just go ahead and tell you, here's my experience. My experience is there's not a shortcut. There's not a um, do this and then that. I mean, we've been coaching this work for about two years, maybe a little longer. And out of all the people that we've seen on a Twin Flame journey, there's not a single person that we've seen reach union that didn't have to do some really big soul searching and deep diving. And in fact, we've seen, I mean, hundreds of people continue to do that deep diving work and still not get into union. And why is that? You know, um, some of you who might be watching this or might be getting a little triggered because if you've been at this a while and you feel like you've really given it everything you have, you might be wondering, you know, why, why me? Where's mine? And feeling left out and feeling lost. And um, and what I want to say about that is, you know, I think that there's there's a paradox here in the twin flame experience where um, where there's a dark side of this, and that is that the dark side of the twin flame experience is that utter miserable longing that is just you can't be happy without it. You um, you think about it all day long. It's you're very disturbed when it comes to your twin flame journey. You go in and out of a place of surrender, but ultimately you just haven't made peace with the fact that you really, really want this experience. You want to manifest this consciously loving relationship, and it's not here yet. You know. Um, so what do you do? What do you do about it? And I think this is the key. And this was Anna my experience is that we got to a place where in this is individually and we've kind of unpacked this together since then but we got to a place individually where it was like okay yeah there's um there's my twin flame desire there's my desire for that love relationship and i just somehow don't have the power to make it happen no matter what i try no matter what i do it's it's not it's not here it's not here in this present relationship it's not in my past relationships I can't seem to make it happen um, and so what what do I do about it well you know here's what we did we started to notice that as long as we stayed in a place of feeling really disempowered with that desire 
of just feeling like that desire was causing us to suffer, then we couldn't, um, you know, that was kind of that stuck place of being blocked. And the only way to not suffer was to completely surrender to the powerlessness that was there. And here's where I want to talk about shadow work. You know, this is where I'm talking about turning your dark side, the dark side of the twin flame experience into the highest potential. And, and this is where I want to talk to you about turning this, you know, attachment that makes you just suffer and long and ache for this person or this experience, taking that and turning it into this capacity within yourself to be consciously loving. How do you go from point A to point B? Um, and that's where we bring in what, uh, what I call shadow work, which I didn't come up with this term. This has been around for a long time. Carl Jung is a famous um, analytic, father of analytical psychology. And you know he came up with this term referring to our untapped potential, referring to the aspects of yourself that are unconscious and he said that which it, it that it, which is in you which is unconscious will cast a shadow into your life into your experience and this is where um, we can start to understand how we project and how we get triggered and why we get triggered so what i would say is if there's any great piece of the spiritual work that you could do to move closer to your union it would be this it would be to look in that place where when you're inside of the twin flame archetypal energy all those things i said in the beginning the longing for a higher love this um you know there's more to it as well these metaphysical experiences this um really intense spirituality of you know maybe being able to kind of always know and sense what's going on with that person or um, you know just having an awakening of your higher senses that you know all of these little nuances that kind of pack into this one big um, imprint in consciousness called the twin flame experience okay so if you can get inside that and find out what is the dark side of this experience what is that for you and i said you know that longing and that suffering but it could be something else you know um i want to say like part of the dark side of my twin flame experience was being in a relationship that wasn't authentic to me and having to really look at why I was in that relationship, what were my motives, what brought me there, and recognize that, you know, I had made those choices out of, out of shadow aspects of myself, of my consciousness, that I hadn't reclaimed those parts of myself, and um, constantly getting triggered and feeling powerless and feeling hopeless, and here's what, you know, um, Carl Jung would say about, you know, working with with yourself inside of the, uh, these energies is that in that place where you are disturbed, where you're suffering, where you have resistance, where you have um, pain, that that is like a magic gateway, a little rabbit hole, a little wormhole into your unconscious self. And here's my experience. My experience is anytime I travel down one of those wormholes into my own darkness, I find a piece of who I really am at the bottom of that tunnel. And it takes a process. There's a process of alchemy that happens. And, you know, I think I hear a lot of uh, people who teach twin flame material talk about it just being a one and done thing, you know. Oh, I cleared that block. Oh, you know, this came up and I released it. Um, that's not my experience. My experience is that there is a process and it's like a spiritual alchemy that happens when you start to become aware of those unconscious aspects of yourself. And you don't even know they're there. And then you've got to sort out the fear and the blame and the guilt and the victimization and the shame, oh, the deep shame um, of looking at those parts of yourself. So you've got to sort all that out and, and release yourself from the judgment just to get a handle on it, just to say to yourself, hey, 
this is what has been here thus far and I am just now becoming aware of it and this is not what this is not who I am this is not what I want to be this is not um, the consciously loving person that I am becoming that is capable of that twin flame romance this is something this is something else and he, this is the shadow of that this is the shadow of that so can you look I mean can you see it as that that's what I would encourage you in is if you could get into that dark place and then drop the judgment you know and just say okay that's not me that's the shadow of me and let me take a look at who's on the other side of that and bring that person into the light and so you know what are your light attributes what is your enlightened twin flame archetype you know um, mine is you know co being consciously loving kind um, communication is a big part of my twin flame experience you know learning how to say what I mean from a place of authenticity and say it without causing harm say it in a way that I'm taking responsibility for my values and who I am and also taking responsibility for any fragments that are left from you know that shadow aspect of myself that might pop in you know it taking full responsibility you know this is this is part of the my light side now this part of myself in the dark would have like cussed you up one way and down the other to express to you that I really wanted to connect with you in an intimate way you know that might be it might be like okay well I want to connect with this person in an intimate way but I'm not really figuring out how to do that and instead I'm just getting irritated and so I'm reacting and my reaction is to push that irritation out and vomit that that blame and there comes the attack you know the verbal attack okay so that was you know maybe one of my patterns pre healing pre shadow work on this part of myself and now I can just go straight into the core of who I am and go okay what is what is it that I value here what is it that I'm trying to create um, and connect into the language and the words to express that and boom that can come out of my mouth and it's and it's so you know that's me and I'm just sharing with you about uh, my personal experience and journey and I would encourage you to you know kind of self-reflect and see what is your personal experience you know what are those places that you just get hung up where you you seem to be dysfunctional in relationships especially um, especially the closer you get to intimacy or the closer you get to the things you really care about where do you just kind of break down where does the fear come up where do you start blaming people where do you start feeling angry and resentful um, let's get inside your twin flame um, experience with this like when it comes to you and your twin flame what is it what is the dark side that your twin flame brings out in you and um, the purpose of that is to look at it to look at the dark side and recognize okay that's not me that is the shadow of me and the shadow is benign it's just the absence of your enlightened self and so if we take that step and we go okay um, I'm gonna look past the shadow into the into the real me into the true me and see who that person is and then I'm gonna choose that I'm gonna choose that person and I'm gonna begin to in a really practical way start to take steps to be that person and this is this is what I said before is that it's not a one and done it's there's not a magic trick with this stuff you, this is real personal development and personal growth you don't just wave a magic wand and all of a sudden you're not an asshole anymore I mean you know it takes practice you have a chemistry of brain chemistry and neurology and you have cellular memory and you know have emotional patterns you have all these things that have to be reprogrammed and it takes time um, I found personally that I will dive into a dark my dark side in one particular area again and again and again 
in becoming a little more aware of who I really am in that place and applying that person that person's values my my true self my core self values to my what I'm doing and how I'm relating to people and it takes you know conscious awareness and conscious thought that oh yeah as I'm going through this I recognize that my pattern in the past may have been to uh, you know blow up if I get start feeling powerless in this relationship with my twin flame I might just blow up and say a bunch of things I don't mean well instead of doing that because that's the that's what the shadow side of me would do instead of doing that now I'm gonna go and say okay I've got to connect with my words I've got to connect with that part of me that knows what I want to create here and what I want to experience here and then I've got to connect that into my communication I've got to run that through my brain and get it out of my mouth in that way now that'll take some practice it'll absolutely take some practice and there might be some things that you do along the way like a healthy boundary like when I get triggered I just need to step away because if I don't this this part of me is prone to just kind of vomit at the mouth okay so I need to step away and here I've got a little like code phrase I might use um, I can't I can't productively communicate with you right now I just need a minute you know walk away collect myself so we develop these ways of grounding the healing into practical action and practical relationship. Um, when I use that word practical, I mean the tangible, the real. You know, so much of our world is inner life. Well, at some point that hits the ground and becomes manifest. And, and that's very practical and it's conscious choice. It's taking responsibility for um, all that you are and all that you're not that's acting out in you um, and that's what shadow work is and you know I, I won't I don't want to sugarcoat it for you because it's definitely a um, it's an emotional process it's a, it's a process of alchemy where everything you might find that these parts of yourself that are really deeply ingrained in behavior and uh, emotional responses that when you start to address them that they start to just kind of die off and the in the new version of you the real you hasn't quite emerged yet and there's this space there where you kind of feel like you might have just disappeared and um, and so you know that's what I want to say is if you're going through this and you're deep diving into your dark side and you get in that middle space where you you just kind of feel like you're having an esoteric crisis you don't know what's going on you don't know who you are you don't know where you are you can't the old way doesn't work and the new way hasn't come yet that that's a natural part of um, spiritual alchemy that's a natural part of doing shadow work and then what you'll find is that that new enlightened version of yourself will emerge and you'll start to notice like oh I have superpowers I never knew I was capable of and you would start to hear things come out of your mouth and where did that come from and brilliant ideas coming in and all of a sudden this part of you that was in the dark is now there it's rejoined into your life force and it's emerging and you're getting to experience that which you really truly are and that that is the moment where you can be at peace with your twin flame desire that's the moment at which you're in that state of surrender and I'll tell you why because all you really desire throughout all of this is to see how truly brilliant and amazing you are how lovable you are how much creative power you can call forth in your life that this this is what you really desire um, I can just say that I, I mean I don't really don't like to speak from a place of like on the mountaintop knowing everything but I, I just feel so convicted in this because this is my experience and I've seen so many people transform their lives that when they can really come to a place of starting to find who they really are and bring that person out of the dark into the light and access the power that's in there this is how you take 
your dark side and you turn it into your highest potential. Your highest potential is trapped behind the shadow of unconsciousness. And when you get really good at this process, you will find that you are so fulfilled. I really do believe that. I feel convicted in that, that you'll find you feel so fulfilled, so appreciative of yourself and your um, abilities and your sense of self and your personal power that you start to then honor that in other people. You become a person who can truly love unconditionally. And when you can become that person, that's when you're a person who can be in that consciously loving relationship of the twin flame experience. Before you become that person, you're just trapped in the shadows. You just make a big mess of things. I mean, how many of you have made a big mess of relationships? I'm sure um, all of us have. And that's what we're learning to do. And, and that's why I think that the twin flame journey can be a, quite a process and quite an endeavor is that there's a lot to endeavor with. There's a lot in the shadows and, um, you know, and I don't want to close out on like a, a downward note. I want to say that there's actually so much hope in that because there's so much higher potential in you still untapped that's ready for you. And as soon as you grab onto it, you get to start utilizing it then immediately, instantaneously. Um, you don't have to collect all of yourself to be in union. You get to use the pieces that you collect on the way and they do so much more for your life than just manifest you and that person in a house living together in, you know, in your um, romance, you know, they, that those parts of yourself do so much for your purpose, for, you know, your contribution to humanity and the evolution of human consciousness. Um, so good. Um, so get to it twin flame shadow work and um, let us know if you have any questions we'd be happy to help you guys navigate some of that and until next time have a good day